Welcome back. I am out on my own today, kicking tires at Motorsports Land. And as I was walking around looking at the different trailers, seeing which ones to tour, I heard a family next to me talking to the salesperson and they asked, well, can my truck tow that? And I thought that is one of probably the most asked question to any of these salesmen or salespeople in an RV dealership is if their truck or their vehicle can tow whatever rig it may be. And I, I understand the question because back when we were first looking, we asked the same question, but really it shouldn't be up to the salesperson to tell you if you can tow that trailer or whatever. You should know what your vehicle should tow. So let's go through and talk about what all the different numbers are and how to actually interpret that information so that you're safe towing and you aren't buying a trailer that's too big. Now realize, as I'm saying this, when we first bought our fifth wheel, we had a three quarter ton uh, 2015 Ram with the Cummins and we were overloaded. I didn't understand some of the numbers and we were fine on most things, but in the end we were overloaded. So this is coming from somebody that made that same mistake that so many people make. So let's start out by going through the trailers and what the trailer numbers actually mean. And then let's talk about what the truck numbers actually mean. When it comes to buying trailers, most people are looking for something similar to one of these. A travel trailer, 30 feet long or shorter, and most people actually tow with a half ton. Half ton trucks are super capable, but there are some limitations and there's a difference between if a half ton truck can tow this trailer, this Puma, or if it can tow the Salem, because they have very, very different as compared to the Shadow Cruisers. Looking at trailer weights, I think they are way more accurate on what they actually can handle because you do not want to overload your trailer. Many of these frames are built for that capacity and nothing more. So it's very important that you actually know the weight. When it comes to trailers like this Puma right behind me here, there's a few different weights that you're gonna need to know. Your cargo capacity, that's how much weight you can actually put in it. Your uh, pin weight or hitch weight or tongue weight, however you wanna say it, which is how much weight is it putting up onto your tow vehicle, your truck, your SUV, whatever it is and your axle carrying capacity. And you need to know how all of those actually affect your tow vehicle. So let's walk around and go through that. This is a Puma XLE 22RBC, which is a pretty standard size for somebody looking with like a half ton truck or what most people tow with. So let's come over here and we have our sticker. So our gross vehicle weight rating, GVWR, is 5,800 pounds. The gross vehicle weight rating means the maximum amount of weight that you can have with this whole trailer all together. Now, your gross vehicle weight rating is important because that's how you figure out your tongue weight or your pin weight or your hitch weight or however you want to say it. On a travel trailer, your hitch weight should be 10 to 15% of what your gross vehicle weight is. You want 10 to 15% going on to your tow vehicle. And that's going to vary if you do an equalizer hitch or a stabilizer hitch, those sort of things. Always factor trying to get 10 to 15% and probably closer to 15% onto your tow vehicle. With a gross vehicle weight rating of 5,800 pounds, with putting 15% onto your tow vehicle, which would be the hitch weight, would be 870 pounds. So that means you are putting 870 extra pounds out onto your tow vehicle. Now, when we get to breaking down tow vehicle numbers, that will make a little bit more sense. It's also important to know what your axles are rated at because your axles back here are carrying the rest of the weight of this whole trailer. The GAWR is the gross axle weight rating. And that is 3,500 pounds. Now that's not 3,500 pounds with both axles, that's per axle. So you have 7,000 pounds of axle carrying capacity, and then you have 870 pounds going on the front. Another really important number to help you know how much you can actually load into your trailer is the dry weight. And this trailer is 4,568 pounds dry. And with a gross vehicle weight rating, 
of 5,800. Now, when you take and you subtract the dry weight from the gross vehicle weight rating, that gives you your payload for this trailer. And this trailer has a payload of 1,232 pounds. So that means you can put in 1,232 pounds worth of stuff in here. But realize that's factoring in, you're putting in your water, your food, all those sort of things. Your dry weight a lot of times does already have your propane calculated into that. So you can take that out of your figuring. Once you get your trailer, and you know your weights and you know that your tow vehicle is capable of carrying it. The next thing is how do you load it up? So that way it's loaded with 15, well, 10 to 15% up on the tongue as opposed to out here on the back because you never want it rear heavy. And a lot of people run into problems because they put rear racks back here and it throws the weights off and it puts too much rear end weight and it makes the front end light and you're gonna run into a lot of sway issues. So just, you know, a heads up. Those racks are great because you can fit so much stuff, but you need to make sure you're keeping the weights right out front or else you're gonna run into issues. Now let's walk over and we're gonna look at the Salem right here, a much larger trailer than the Puma we just checked out to see what the differences are in the numbers between the two so you can see how fast those numbers can change. The gross vehicle weight rating, GVWR, is 9,999 pounds. So basically 10,000 pounds. It doesn't look like it's that much of a different trailer, but it jumps up significantly on the weight. Then you have your gross axle weight rating of 5,100 pounds. Let's see if we can find your payload. Okay. So a lot of times you can see it right here. It'll tell you right here. You can see the combined weight of cargo should never exceed 2740. Now, we can calculate and get our dry weight based on that. So if we take the gross vehicle weight rating of 9,999 pounds and you subtract 2740, that will give you your dry weight. So the Salem here weighs 7,259 pounds dry. <laughs> that, that, it weighs more dry than the Puma weighed fully loaded. And it's not that much bigger of a trailer. It just adds up so quick. And a lot of times, you don't take into account, even though it's only a few feet bigger, how much more weight that can add. If you're looking at your hitch weight for this trailer, you're looking at 1,000 to 1,500 pounds, depending on how you have it loaded. If it's only 10% hitch weight, you're at 1,000, up to 15%, you're gonna have 1,500 pounds. And that's going to take you probably out of half ton capable territory. It's just crazy how fast all these weights add up. And you'll see people going down the road with this tied onto their half ton truck all the time. And for the most part, they're doing just fine. And I'd like to think that it's just because they don't know what their weights really are and what their truck should really carry. Because every truck is so different. Even if you just buy, let's just say the best selling trucks F-150. Every different model of that F-150 and every configuration is going to change your tow numbers. They see the commercial of the Toyota pulling the space shuttle and they're like, it can tow anything that's not that factual so you really need to look into what your truck is capable of rather than not have enough vehicle when you're looking at fifth wheels the weights are going to be a little bit different gross vehicle weight rating still means the same thing that is the total weight of the entire trailer so we have this phoenix light right here let's look at the weights here has a gross vehicle weight rating of 11,000, so that's the max for it it has a payload of 2,281. So that means the dry weight for it is going to be 8,719. Now that 8,719 is very different than 11,000. More than likely you will never tow this trailer at 8,719 pounds. By the time you have stuff in it, all that, you're probably almost always gonna be closer to that 11,000. So I would always just figure you're, you're pulling 11,000 with this. But it would be super easy to actually exceed this and overload this trailer and cause structural damage because these trailers are not meant to hold much more than their gross vehicle weight rate. Now gross axle weight rating, 5,000 pound axle, so same as the other one. Now a lot of times you'll see that the axle weight rating is, le is less than the total vehicle weight rating. You have to figure in that some of the trailer's weight is going to go onto the vehicle. 
So the axles, even though they're only rated at 10,000 pounds and this is 11,000 pound trailer, they're compensating by saying, you're gonna put that extra weight onto your tow vehicle. Now, when you're dealing with fifth wheels, this is called your pin weight. And with a fifth wheel, you're gonna have more pin weight than you do with a travel trailer. You are going to have 20 to 25% of the total vehicle weight. So 20 to 25% of this 11,000 pounds is going to be sitting in the bed of your truck on this pin. Now, I always like to figure it's gonna be a little bit heavy. So I did the 25% on the pin weight. So with this 11,000 pound trailer, you're gonna have 2750 in pin weight. So if you have this trailer all loaded up and if you have it situated so you're putting 25% on the pin, that's going to be 2750. It is very easy on these fifth wheels, even a light fifth wheel like this, to surpass the capacity of your three quarter ton truck. With the travel trailers, three quarter tons a lot of times are right in that sweet spot, but you're gonna, with a fifth wheel, you need to jump to a one ton pretty quick. And that's the problem that we ran into when we first bought our trailer. We had plenty of tow capacity, but these fifth wheels, they put so much pin weight that you go over your payload. And if you start thinking about your payload on your truck, you can go through that pretty quick. By the time you factor in, you're in your hitch, the people riding in there, your extra gear, all those sort of things. So it's amazing how fast this thing becomes almost duly territory, even though this is a light. Now, that being said, it all depends on how you have your truck set up. So before you, you know, start typing on this baloney, I blah, 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 every truck's different. So just, these are generalities. Now, as I do this, I'm trying to keep it simple and concise so it doesn't get so overwhelming on the numbers and all that sort of stuff. But I'm hoping that you can see how fast all this stuff adds up and how it's going to affect your RVing experience and your safety going down the road because none of us want to be responsible for an accident that hurts somebody, kills somebody, all those sort of things. So as much as some people will say, oh, the weights aren't that big of a deal, when other people's lives could be affected by that, it's good to know what your actual capacities are. You should not let that be something that you just took the word of your salesman on. All right, so let's talk about truck numbers. Back in the day, I don't know if my grandpa ever looked at his payload numbers. He knew he had a three quarter ton and I had a diesel and basically anything he hooked onto that this could move, he was capable of towing and he probably overloaded a lot. But nowadays we need to be a little bit more worried about that. Now we're gonna go through the numbers on our truck. This is a 2021 Chevy 3500 high country with the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax diesel to see what the numbers are. And a lot of people mess up because they don't actually look at the numbers because this is the same engine in the dually or in the three quarter ton. So it really depends on how you have it set up. Now this being a high country with the four doors, with the short bed, with the diesel, the weights are gonna be different as compared if it was a long bed or if it was a dually or if it was a single cab or a double cab or if it was a base model instead of the high country with all the extra stuff. So that all needs to be factored in. And that's one of the biggest problems with asking your salesman, can my truck tow this? How would the salesman know what your truck can tow? They're selling trailers, they aren't selling trucks, and every truck is different. So with trucks, you have very similar numbers. You have gross vehicle weight rating, you have gross axle weight rating, you have your payload, but you also have your towing capacities based on if it's a, a tongue pull or a bumper pull, so it's going off of the receiver hitch in the back. If it's a fifth wheel coming out of the bed of your truck, or even if it's a gooseneck still coming out of the bed of the truck, those all factor a little bit different, so the weight ratings can change there too. Now on our truck, right here, it gives all of our trailering information, and I'm sorry, it's a little bit dark. So our gross vehicle weight rating is 12,100 pounds. Our gross combined weight rating, so that's going to be the truck and the trailer together, is 29,700 pounds. Our rear gross axle weight rating is 7,250. Our curb weight, so that's just basically the truck with nothing in it, is 8,391. And our max payload, which is the maximum we can put into this truck, 
is 3709. It's really nice that a lot of the newer vehicles are doing this and giving you all those numbers. <clears throat> and as we come down, conventional trailer. So that's going off of the, the receiver hitch in the back, 20,000 pounds. A max tongue's weight of 2,000 pounds. So you're seeing your 10% there. Gooseneck trailer rating, 21,200. And the max tongue weight on that would be 3180. So it's really nice that all these numbers are laid out here and the newer vehicles are doing this. And a lot of the brand new ones have it even into your infotainment system that'll tell you if you're overloading your truck, which is really dang cool. It'd be really cool if they could actually weigh as you go, but uh, they haven't figured that all out yet, I guess. With the trailering on this, 20,000 pounds off of the hitch, yeah, 10% is 2,000 pounds, so that one's easy. But if you think your gooseneck trailer I can tow 21,200, but if we think 20 to 25% of that, let's think of what the payload would actually be, the hitch weight, the pin weight on that. So if we do 21,200, 21,200, sorry, I'm not that good at math. That's why I teach history. And we times that by 0.25. With the gooseneck trailer at 21,200, if you're doing 25% on the pin weight, that's 5,300. You are way, over your uh, payload capacity on that. With fifth wheel trailers, we figure 20, 25%. But the hard part is a fifth wheel RV, you can't move stuff around that much to change the weights. So when this says the gooseneck trailer weight rating, it's factoring in if you had like an open deck that you could move, you know, the backhoe back a little bit and put more weight on the axles, those sort of things. You don't have that option with a fifth wheel trailer. You can move weight around a little bit, but nothing like, you know, backing the tractor up a little bit to get more weight wherever you needed it. Because there's no way you can put 5,000 pounds of pin weight onto this truck. So with your gooseneck, you're looking way more at like 15%. Now it's really easy to look at that payload and be like, 3,700 pounds. I can tow a trailer that puts 3,700 pounds on the truck. Not quite. So for us, we're about 2,500 pounds max. Well, 25 to 2,800 pounds is about max for us because we're going to have our passengers. Usually it's just Kara and I, but I mean, if you want to factor enough that you had room. So four people figure, you know, another six to 800 pounds, depending on who they are. Then you have your hitch and our companion hitch is another 125 pounds. Then you have fuel and cargo in there. You know, all your other things you might have in your truck. Also, we have our hitch back here. I mean, there's another like 30 to 50 pounds. It's just all the weight adds up really quick. And with that weight adding up, you don't have that 3,700 pounds when it comes right down to it. And that's where most people get in trouble with loading up their fifth wheels on their, on their trucks. It's when you start putting everything else in and your payload gets a little bit too high. For example, our truck's never empty. Right here we have a new gooseneck ball that I need to get put in. And then we have all of our storage down here. We have sockets, we have jumper cables, tools, all sorts of stuff. So all of these things add in to that payload. Now this was just off the top of my head. So if I missed any weights or maybe misspoke or something, let me know down below. I think I was fairly accurate on it, but it's something that we need to take into account is the weights of the trailers and the weights that our vehicles are able to tow. That way we can all get down the road as safe as possible because nobody wants to cause an accident because they overloaded their vehicle. And we shouldn't be asking one of the salesmen trying to sell us one of these, what our vehicles can tow. That's kind of up to us as the buyer to know what. Now, I was actually really impressed. The salesman here at Motorsports Land in Spanish Fork answered the question really well. They went through what the vehicle was, they walked over, they showed them on the door, all that sort of stuff, which is kind of unique because most salesmen just say, you can tow anything. I got told that with my three quarter ton truck and then I found out otherwise. So um, comment below what you think, if I missed any numbers, all that sort of stuff. As always, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, all those sort of things and enjoy your weekend.